we have a spring block system like this. and mu here is not zero, there is friction present in the ground. Now if we have to pull this, we have to apply a force F. This force F has to do two things. First overcome the spring force and second overcome the friction force. Because the spring force and the friction force both will be opposing the motion of this block towards right. Now if we do it very slowly so that the block does not gain any kinetic energy that then at any point of time the external force has to be equal to the spring force which is k into x plus frictional force and suppose very slowly we brought the block to a new position then in that case what ha would happen there is no kinetic energy gained by the block. The work which we have done, that has done two things. First, it has overcome the friction. So, some amount of work has been actually lost as heat because of friction. And second, it has stored certain potential energy in the spring block system. But it has not given any kinetic energy. The reason why it has not given any kinetic energy is the total amount of work done equals, equates exactly the sum of the potential energy which has come in the spring and the heat loss due to friction. That means the work done by the friction and potential energy stored in the spring block system equals to the work done that we have done. Because force at any moment is equal to the frictional force and the force due to the spring block system. Now, does it work? The work done by conservative force, work done by conservative force would be, uh, which is the conservative force here? Friction, no, external force, no, spring force here is the conservative force. Work done by the conservative force, work done by the non-conservative force, non-conservative force could be the external force as well, this F. Work done by the frictional force, frictional force would also be external and non-conservative force, would be equal. I mean, when we calculate the work, it would come out equal. Let's do the calculation. When we move this block from, uh, by when we do the displacement of it by D, work done by the external force would be F into D. Work done by the internal forces would be spring force into the frictional force. Now, frictional force is going to remain constant because frictional force depends upon normal reaction and normal reaction here is being constant. So, frictional force is being constant. So, the work due to frictional force can be calculated immediately. That means that is mu into n mu mg into displacement. This is the work done by the frictional force. Work done by the external force would be work. Let's first calculate work done by the spring force. Work done by spring force we know is half k x squared. This we have calculated before because the force will not remain constant. The spring force will depend upon the stretch in the spring and so we have to go for integration. So, I mean that you know. So, work done by spring force is half k x squared. Work done by external force will be this because external force is k x into f. So, work done, a small work done at any moment would be kx this into dx plus f into dx the total work done by external force has will be equal to integration of this integration of x dx is half kx square uh, is <laughs> x dx is half x square the whole of it will be half kx square and integration of dx is simply x f into x so, work done by the external force is equal to half kx square plus f into x. Work done by the spring force. Work done by spring force actually if you use the, with, the, with the proper sign, displacement is on the right and the spring force is on the, on the left. So, work done by the spring force is actually negative, minus half kx square. And work done by frictional force, again friction is on the left and displacement is towards right. 
So work done by frictional force is minus mu mg into x. So we see that the work done by external force is exact numerically same but opposite in sign with the sum of the spring force and x work done by frictional force. So the net work done will again come out to be zero. So work done is zero, net work done is zero, then change in kinetic energy is zero. I mean that's how it should be. It sh obviously, if you if you think of about it, it will seem very intuitively you will be able to understand that this is how it should be. Because at any junction, if you see, if the forces are equal, the two force, the net force on the left hand side is equal to the net force on the right hand side. Then for any small displacement, the work done for the right hand side of force is the numerically same as the work done on the left hand side of the force because displacement for both the forces are the same. But the right hand side will be work done is will be positive because force and displacement being on the same side, same direction. For this, it will be negative. So numerically, both will be same but opposite in sign. So net work done will obviously come out to be zero. And because the net force is zero, net kinetic energy will also be zero. So this is true. The net work done is equal to net change in kinetic energy. So this holds. So this is work energy theorem. Now we will solve certain problems and we will see what kind of question could be asked from this.